we have developed a DAC. Uh, what's interesting about this DAC is that it's using the same digital engine as the M2. So it's using our direct digital technology. So what we do is we take in PCM up to 24-bit. We then, uh, using a 108 megahertz master clock, uh, we have a very high precision conversion from PCM to PWM. And the PWM sampling rate is 844 kilohertz. So what this does is it, it basically uh, cleanses whatever came in of any jitter. But by reclocking it and converting it to PWM, it allows us on the other end where it eventually turns into analog to have an extremely uh, high accuracy and a very, very uh, uh, undigital sound quality. It's, uh, uh, as you know, PWM is, uh, is the native format for uh, uh, direct stream digital, which a lot of audiophiles have found to just not sound digital like PCM. Well, that's kind of what we're doing in here. We're turning everything into, uh, into DSD, but it's done at, uh, instead of 386 kilohertz, it's 844K. So it's even a higher sampling rate. It's a higher precision clock. Um, the M2 is really the, uh, the development platform for what we have now developed a chip uh, from that mathematics. So the M2 developed the mathematics for, uh, for our digital technology. And now we have that on a chip. And that chip is an eight-channel chip. So uh, it allows us in the future to do things with, uh, uh, with our AV receivers. But the extra channels can be used in the case of a DAC like this where we're only using two channels, we can gang those extra channels together. And every time we do that, we drop the noise by 6 dB. So we've got, uh, each channel has basically four gangs of, uh, of processing, and uh, uh, that drops the noise down uh, very, very low. And it, it gives us basically an unmeasurable jitter. Um, and there's by the way, there's a couple of different kinds of jitter. The one that you see measured in the mag, uh, by many journals, journalists and labs is usually the static jitter, which is mostly gives you a signal-to-noise uh, uh, ratio. Uh, there's also dynamic jitter, which is what happens when the music's playing, which is almost impossible to measure because it's dynamic. Uh, but what we can observe in our instrumentation is that this design has superb performance in, uh, in dynamic jitter as well. Uh, it gives us over 130 dB of dynamic range. We can accept PCM inputs up to 24-bit 192K, uh, and we can do that through the SPDIF uh, AES EBU. We have a coax and an optical. We also have a USB audio class 2, uh, which supports up to 192K. Uh, we have an HDMI repeater with video pass-through. Um, again, I mentioned on the M50, the reason we put HDMI was that it's an encrypted high-definition interface. Uh, here, there's sort of a practical use for it. Uh, a lot of people that love music also like movies, but maybe don't want to go through the uh, complexity of a, of a surround system. So uh, you can plug a Blu-ray player into this. It will extract the mandatory uh, two-channel PCM soundtrack. Uh, and send the video onto your flat panel. So you can make a, uh, a very nice, uh, high-quality uh, uh, video system. The outputs are uh, both balanced and uh, single-ended. And uh, like the M2, we're using the same volume control. And again, we can, uh, uh, because we've got a 35-bit uh, pathway, we can uh, attenuate the volume without uh, losing information. You know, digital volume controls work by just, basically you've got this many bits and you move it down, and as you move it down, you're losing the bits at the bottom. So uh, with a 16-bit signal, we were down to minus 144 before we truncate any bits. So basically, there's no loss there. Even with a 24-bit signal, we're down to 68 dB, which you know, is extremely quiet. You know, you're putting your ear to the speaker to hear uh, something at minus 66 before we truncate any bits. So it's, it's, it is, in essence, a, a perfect volume control. And uh, that's available uh, via the remote control. So this can be used as a preamp, uh, a digital preamp. If all your sources were digital, you can use it that way.